Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build this Dash app. It has a Dash AG grid table with columns that you can move around. It has a um, scatter map with all the a majority of the buildings in New York City. If you click on the scatter map, it will create a scatter plot with all the buildings in the same zip code of the building that you clicked on. So click on this code, this building, or this building. You'll get the, an annotation of the building that you clicked on together with all the other buildings in that zip code. And then you can update the graph with a drop down. You can say, I want the x axis to be the year that the buildings were built in that zip code, the energy score, which is just uh, to see where your building sits compared to others, and the site energy use. Right? to try to see if there's any correlation between energy use and energy score. Seems to be no correlation. So this app involves a lot of things, right? A table, a scatter map, uh, click data. So when the user clicks, another app is, another graph is created, an annotation, and a dropdown. So let's see how we do all this with Dash. This is a beautiful um, data app, all in Python, <coughs> using Dash and Plotly. We're going to use this CSV sheet. Now, if you want to download it, I have instructions. Together with the code, just go to uh, Charming Data. I'll provide this link under the video. And you have here the code and some instructions on another post of how to download this data set, which comes from the New York City Open Data. I'll actually put it under the video uh, description. Uh, in Charming Data, which is open and free for everybody, we come together to build AI apps together. So hopefully you can join us. Just click on, just go to charming-data.com uh, and uh, see you there. Okay. So the first thing we're doing is, let's make sure that you can see this. Uh, we're going to import the necessary libraries. And then we're going to incorporate the CSV sheet into a pandas data frame called data. And then I'm going to fill. I'm going to limit the data because the data has like 60,000 rows. 30,000 of them are from 2023. So I just want the column calendar year to be from 2023. I don't want 2022. And I want only those rows that has an energy um, an energy star score. So if the energy star score is not available, remove it from the the data set. So here's my limited uh, data set. I'm going to build my scatter map um, that you can see here. This scatter map. This scatter map is has the latitude column for the latitude, the longitude, hover data. So if you hover over it, you'll see the hover data, address, energy. It also has some custom data that we're going to use later to create the scatter map and then the map style. So all of this is in the back end, this scatter map. To visualize, it, to visualize it on the page, I have to assign it to the figure property of the dash core component. So this, this whole layout is what you're seeing on the page. Layout, first we have our dash AG grid, which uh, represents our rows and columns with pagination. You see this is our table, dash AG grid with pagination. And then we have our graph, which is our scatter map. And then we have our drop down with three different options. These are actually names of columns in the data set. So here are the three different options. And then we have this empty space where I'm going to insert the scatter map right here, this empty div. Right? So I do this with the callback. What this callback is doing is going to listen to the value of the drop down and it's going to listen to the click data. And so based on the click data of the map, the scatter, the scatter map, uh, and based on the chosen value of the dropdown, we're going to fil uh, filter the data or slice it, create a new scatter map with some annotations, and then return this whole figure in the DCC, the dash graph component to be able to see it in the layout. Remember, we are returning this the return object to the children of this ID. Now this ID is the, the, the div. So we're actually returning it here. When the callback executes and finishes, this is a, what is being returned. 
Okay, but it's dynamic, so we're going to keep this out. All right, so let's look at the callback. We'll take in the click data and the column selected. This is the value of the dropdown, right? One of these, one of these three. If the click data is none, no update. Don't do anything, right? If we refresh the app and there's no click data, don't do anything. Just have this empty, empty plot. There's nothing there. But if there is a click data, I want to print it just so you can see. This is a printed data right here. And uh, we're going to extract a few things. I want to extract the property ID, the zip code, and the energy score. So we have to go into points, first item in the points uh, list, custom data 0, custom data 1, custom data 3. Why? Because if I go into points, the first item is this list. If we go inside this list, the custom data is right here. So if we take the custom data, it's this list right here. And we can take the first object, the second object, or the fourth object, 0, 1, 3. So the first object is going to be our property ID. The second object will be the zip code of that building that was clicked. And the third, or the fourth, will be the energy score. Now, and this is the address. Now, address and energy score will always be there because by default, it, it's there because we put it in the hover data of the scatter map, right? But I didn't have anything else. And I wanted the property ID and zip code. So I added to custom data. This is invisible. This is invisible data in the scatter map. I added this uh, data to the custom data. So now I can pull these two columns in the custom data of, um, of the graph once I click on it. OK, so we have a property ID or a zip code or energy. I'm going to use the zip code to limit the data set, the original data set to only those uh, zip codes where that building was clicked on. So we'll call it DF limited, right? So if I click on this, the zip code is 11104. And only those buildings in 1104 are going to be part of the data set. So we have this new data set. We're going to convert the energy and the energy star and energy use column to numeric. I think they are type string. We're going to rebuild our scatter plot, but in the x-axis, will have the column that was selected right from the drop down so the x axis will be either this or this or this one of the three this is columns in the in the data set this is our f string for the title and then i'm going to create colors i'm going to say I want, why do i want to create colors i'm going to say i want to create this list of colors where um this new column called color column where if the in in, in the property id column if the um, if the property ID is equal to this property ID, or if the row x is the row, if the row is equal to this property ID, remember this is the property ID we clicked on, then make it blue. Otherwise, you know, call just say add the string blue. Otherwise, the string is red. So we have like twenty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine rows that have the string red. And one is going to have the string blue because this property ID, that row equals the property ID of the of the data clicked on. So now that we have the color column, we can uh, assign it to the marker of our figure, and then we're going to create our x annotation. We are going to from that we're going to limit the data set only to that property ID, which is only one row, and we'll extract that item which is from the from that column selected. Um, so now we have our annotation, and now we can add the annotation to the figure like this, with no arrow, x-axis and y-axis is going to be the, the location of the annotation, right? Your clicked building. There we go. So we have the annotation, and now we return the graph to the children of the HD, HTML div, so it's under the dropdown. So this is how you can uh, in, build your data app with a table, uh, multiple graphs, click data, drop downs, and uh, all in Python. Um, again, this is part of the Charming Data uh, February, January, February project. We're going to add some AI and some RAG elements to this. Hope you can join us. Um, that is it. If you have any questions in the under the description in the comments, please feel free to ask me. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day. Always remember, we're better together, so help each other out. Bye, everyone.